And I fucking dare you to try to come at me with an even worse airport story. You might be able to say that if someone got stabbed at the airport, maybe that's worse, but I would disagree because at least they would die. If you're wondering why I look like a crazy person right now, it's just because I'm setting the tone for the rest of this video. I want to do a story time video. I've been meaning to film one for a while and I figured what better time to do it than right now while I look like a troll in my pajamas and am sitting in the middle of an empty apartment. This perfectly encapsulates where my life is right now, just complete emptiness. I feel like this is the right setting to tell you the lowest point of my life. As some of you know, I tend to have pretty bad experiences at the airport. I've missed domestic flights, I've missed international flights, I've forgotten my passport, I've sat next to disgusting people, I've gotten sick from those disgusting people, the list goes on and on. But nothing will ever top the time that I was stuck in the airport for three and a half days. To this day, no matter how many people I've told this story to, nobody has come up with a story that is worse than mine. You only think this is a bad story because of the video title saying that I was stuck for three and a half days, but that's only because the video title cannot contain every single bad thing that happened. There was projectile vomiting. There were creepy janitors. Every time I thought my life couldn't get any worse, it did. I'm gonna share my story about the worst airport experience I have ever had, but before we get into that, I am contractually obligated to tell you that this video has been sponsored by Flawless by Friday. Flawless by Friday is a skincare company that uses natural and cruelty-free ingredients, and they sent me two of their most popular items. The first one is the Mesmerize. This one is for you to just help get rid of your eye bags when you are spending too much time in the middle of the night watching YouTube videos like this one. And then the other one is the five-day mask system. They literally have a face mask with a different active ingredient each day. And if I had that shit when I was stuck at the airport, maybe I wouldn't have looked so goddamn crusty. But to compensate for my crustiness at the airport, I'm gonna go ahead and wear one of the face masks in the middle of the video. Oh, look, they sent me this. Oh my gosh, this is like the kind of shit that you sent to real influencers, not this shit right here. These are the five masks for each day. There's high up there's the hyaluronic acid facial mask, vitamin C facial mask, green tea facial mask, caffeine facial mask, and lastly, honey facial mask. Since it's a Monday, I'm gonna go ahead and wear the hyaluronic acid facial mask, which is otherwise known as Moisture Monday. I had a Moisture Monday when I was at the airport too, but I don't think it was the good kind. You try wearing the same underwear for three days at a dirty airport, and you're gonna have a Moisture Monday too. I think this is the most times I've said moisture in a video, and I'm not sure if I'm selling this product well by doing so, but I'm gonna try it on and we'll see how it goes. So I have no idea why Flawless Friday decided to sponsor me. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh my God, I can't even tilt my camera correctly because my fingers are slimy. <laughs> anyway, I have no idea why they decided to sponsor me because I think it's pretty clear from my videos that I do not take care of myself at all. But maybe that's why they decided to sponsor me. They saw my crusty looking face and they were like, this bitch needs help. You know what? I will take all the help I can get. This is like when you wanna be a Ninja Turtle for Halloween, but you can't afford the costume. Last time I put on a face mask in a video, people were yelling at me for not putting it on correctly. Bitch, does it look like I know how to put on a face mask? I guess I should put it on properly since it's a sponsored video, but I, I genuinely don't know if I'm doing it right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like, I'm looking at myself in the camera and I'm thinking, this is my life. I hope I'm putting it on right. If I'm not, flawless by Friday, I am so sorry. Maybe they're trying to expand their audience demographic just to show that if a dumbass can put on this face mask, so can you. Time to smile. <laughs> oh, that's how it works. You know what? This shit actually feels pretty good. Wow, it's like I'm wearing a second skin. Just as creepy, but extra nourishing. I'm gonna leave this on for 15 minutes throughout the video. Oh my God, am I a beauty guru now? Don't forget to click the link in my description and use Cindy15 to get 15% off. 
just a quick update. Originally, it was gonna be 15%, but now we're gonna do 50% off of all products because we know that you bitches are broke. All right, now let's get into the story. So this happened over a year ago, back in 2018. It was right after New Year's, so already we're starting off with a bang. You know how some people make New Year's a really big deal because they think that whatever happens on New Year's will set the tone for the rest of the year? I feel like God just didn't want me to have any expectations for 2018. You know, like he just wanted to set me straight. At this time, I was in San Jose for Christmas break, but now that it was over, it was time to catch an 8 a.m. flight to Norfolk, where I currently live. The day that I woke up to catch my flight, I immediately felt awful when I woke up. Granted, I feel awful all the time whenever I wake up, but this time it was physically instead of mentally. I woke up with a stomach ache and I also really felt like I needed to throw up, but because I had to catch my flight in the morning, I knew that I didn't have time to do so, so I just figured I would suck it up, just try to catch my flight first, and then worry about the rest later. The reason why my stomach felt so bad was because the previous night I had eaten takeout sushi that was left out in the counter for a little too long, and that was my first fatal mistake but once again decided to suck it up apparently i arrived on a morning where it seemed like every fucking person in san jose was also trying to fly at the same time that day i had to wait at the end of the line which was all the way at the back of the airport so the wait throughout the line was excruciatingly long because again i was dealing with that stomach ache that i was feeling by the time i was like in the middle of the line i just couldn't deal with it anymore i felt like the pain was getting even worse i turned to the girl who was behind me in line and i said hey could you look over my suitcase and hold my place in line while i rented a bathroom real quick and she said yeah sure and so i literally ran to the bathroom because my body instinctively knew some shit was gonna go down. But you know what? I didn't make it. <laughs> Before I could reach the bathroom, my stomach was like, no. and my body knew it was over. It was the beginning of the end because I, in the middle of the airport lobby, in front of everybody, projectile vomited right across the floor. Right when it happened, I heard people around me going, ugh, or ill. You know, it was just like an instinctive reaction because they didn't even have like the time to try to be polite about it. It was just that disgusting. Might I remind you, I was eating sushi last night, right? And usually when I eat sushi rolls, I get the chef's specialty rolls where they put a ton of like fish eggs and spicy mayo. My vomit was like, you know, the orange, pinkish pastel colors that are really cute to paint on wallpaper, but fucking disgusting when you vomit it out. I'm just trying to paint a picture here for how disgusting this was and for how humiliated I was. I run to the bathroom, I go into the first stall right away, and I try to vomit the rest out, but there really wasn't much left because I just left the rest of it outside. But still, I spent a few minutes in the stalls trying to clean myself up and trying not to think about how I've dishonored my family, my country, my entire life. I was trying to collect myself together, clean myself up. Right when I turn around to unlock the bathroom stall and go out and face the world in my humiliation, I had to stop because two women came inside the restroom and they were pissed. I never got to see their faces, but their voices had the kind of tone where they were like, can I talk to your manager? And so they were yelling inside the restroom. They were like, oh my God, are you kidding me? This is so disgusting. Oh my God, it's everywhere. I can't believe this happened before Vegas. Oh my God, it's on my shirt too. Wash it out, wash it out. Piecing together the context of their conversation led me to one conclusion. You see, when I put together my deduction skills, I realized that something occurred in the few minutes between when I vomited and when I hid in the bathroom. Apparently, after it happened, I guess a few seconds or a few minutes afterward, these two women were crossing to the airport lobby, probably trying to catch their flight to Vegas. I guess they didn't look, maybe they were in a rush, and one of them ended up slipping into my vomit. <laughs> 
I'm hiding in the stall while Becky and Susan are fucking pissed. The thing is, I don't have time to hide in a stall all day because I had to catch my flight too. But I could not walk out of the stall while those two were in the bathroom. I am not going to go out there and be denounced by the white community, okay? In this socio-political climate, that's just dangerous. Susan and Becky were trying to go to Vegas during their midlife crisis and I just turned it into a bigger crisis. Eventually, they left the restroom and then I did too. And the the moment I stepped out, I could feel everybody's eyes looking at me. I had to walk past by the scene of the crime where a janitor was already cleaning up my mess and I just muttered very ashamedly saying sorry to the janitor. I'm so sorry. The thing is like, I always feel so bad for service people because they have the worst kinds of jobs and I swear to God, if I wasn't in a rush to catch my flight, I would have volunteered to clean up the mess too. Like, I don't think anybody should have done that. I felt horrible about it. I also had to walk past by Karen and Becky who were talking to one of the airport workers and pointing me out, but the whole time, I just kept my head down in shame. I avoided all eye contact, I kept my head down the whole time, and I got to the end of the line because that's where my suitcase was. It was at the end of the line because the girl who was supposed to hold it for me saw what happened and she was like, fuck this, and she left it back at the end of the line, which is understandable. Well, I had to wait in line all over again, stewing in my shame. Part of me was keeping my head down in embarrassment, and then the other part of me, to be honest, <laughs> kind of found it funny. Like I was internally laughing and crying at the same time. It felt like my life was a comedy, except I have no love interest and no character development and no resolution. I think the reason why I wasn't 100% horrified by it is because I'm so used to bad shit happening to me all the time that I'm just like, uh, it's another day in the life. Another day in the life of a beauty guru. So I wait and wait and wait in my shame and disgust and embarrassment. And eventually I get to the front of the line. And when I go there, to check into my flight and drop off my suitcase. It turns out that I missed my flight. Love that for me. Just a day in the life of a beauty guru. I had to leave the lobby to go to customer service instead. The wait there was also really long. I was held up in line where they didn't really even bother paying any attention to me. And I was held up in line with these two other women who were in hijabs, which goes to show that the level of disgust that people have with me is on par with racism. And my oppressed sisters and I will not stand for this. I had to pay to rebook a flight to Norfolk. But the thing about Norfolk is that there's no direct flights there usually, especially when you're coming from California. They ended up rebooking me on a flight that would go to a different state, that would go to this other state, that would go to this other state before eventually that last state would end up going to Norfolk. Basically, my new flight that I ended up paying extra for had three separate stops before I would end up going back home. All three of these stops are on the same plane, which means that I'm stuck in the same seat for the entire day and I don't get to eat at all until I arrived in Norfolk that night. The worker also felt compelled to tell me that they are not responsible for what happens to my suitcase, which had four library books and my work laptop. So I was like, Great. There's a long trip ahead of me. I boarded on my new flight and when I got on there, I was scanning the seats to try to figure out where to sit because it wasn't assigned seating or anything. And when I was looking around, this lady caught my eye. She looked at me and she smiled at me with the kindest eyes that anybody could ever bestow upon another person. She smiled and she asked me if I would like the free seat next to her. And I'm just thinking, she doesn't know about my past and what I've done? Would she even look at me the same way if she knew the sins that I've committed, the monster that I've become? Or would she recoil in disgust if she knew the truth? I don't know. But all I could do was just close my eyes and try to let the comfort of sleep take me through hell in the sky. Here's a picture that I sent to my friends to encapsulate what was going on. If you look closely, you can see that I had blue hair at the time and a quiet little eye mask going on, so I basically just look like a nasty little gremlin committing biological warfare in the San Jose airport. So I'm on the airplane and I'm just curled up like a little cocoon. I'm like, you know what? It's okay, because at least now I can hide from the public. I will never step foot back in San Jose ever again. No one will ever recognize me again. It's not like I will ever create a popular YouTube channel, okay? I'm safe. I didn't eat anything for the whole time because I was afraid that 
I would vomit again. Like I didn't even want to try to fuck with my stomach. I just wanted to play it safe. So I'm sitting there in that same plane in the same seat for hours. I'm shivering because I'm cold, but I'm also sweating because I'm hot at the same time. It's like my body couldn't decide whether it was hot or cold. So it just decided to be both. And I'm like, bitch, am I gonna fucking die? And you know what? I wish I did. Because as I shivered and sweated through the pain on my first stop and on my second stop and on my third stop, I reached that last stop and I was thinking, finally, this is the home stretch. I can just make it through a couple more hours and I will be home. But then something happens. The flight attendant makes an announcement for the entire plane. All passengers going to Norfolk, please exit out of the airplane. And I'm like, that's weird, but maybe they just changed the flights or something, which has happened to me before. Usually when they change flights, when you leave the airplane and go back into the airport of wherever you landed, they hand you your new ticket for the next flight available. But I walk out and nobody hands me anything and I'm just standing in the middle of Maryland and I'm like the fuck is going on apparently there was a snowstorm going on in Norfolk so all the flights that are coming into that city tonight are canceled I had to talk to a worker who rebooked me for the next available flight which would be 5 a.m. the next morning which also means that I had to look for and pay for my own hotel so I had to find some cheap hotel to sleep in there with nothing but the clothes on my back I truly felt like the Lord was testing me and and thinking this bitch is getting too comfortable sitting in her cramped dirty seat on the basic economy airplane so i'm just gonna throw a wrench in her way and see what the fuck happened i ended up eating my first meal at 10 p.m that night because that was when i arrived to the closest hotel to the airport and the food was all super overpriced as they usually are but they didn't even have like any healthy food that would be better for my stomach like not even oatmeal or soup or anything so i just settled for this dry ass expensive burger instead i'm texting my friends to update them on what happened at some point i say i'm just waiting to get hit by a car at this point except that won't happen because i actually want that and I'm expecting my luggage to be lost because that would happen to me. My work laptop and four library books are in there, so that's a lot of money that I'm gonna be losing. My friends are like, holy shit, shit went down while we were sleeping and living our privileged lives without a care in the world. Karma got its kiss for you. It wasn't just a kiss. Karma tongued me down my throat. I wonder what life will toss at me next time. Like, how are they gonna top this one? Maybe somebody will stab me at the airport, but I unfortunately survived with the wounds and have to pay the hospital bills too because that's healthcare in America. And then to end day one of my adventure, I started my period. Two, the fun never ends. So that was quite a hectic day one. Now let's get on to day two. I got around three to four hours of sleep because I was dealing with period cramps, obviously, but I also still felt really sick in general. I woke up at 4 a.m. to catch the bus to the airport. My body was still doing that weird thing where it was shivering from cold, but also sweating from being hot. I don't know what the fuck was wrong with my body. Somehow, even though it's a 5 a.m. flight, the airport is still crowded. I managed to my gate just in time for boarding. But then the announcements come back and they say that this flight has been moved to another gate. So I asked the ticketing agent to tell me where this new gate is. She tells me that it's a number that is all the way at the opposite end of the airport. So I have to briskly walk across the airport because if I run, I'm afraid I might throw up again. And I'm not prepared to be denounced by the white community for the second day in a row, okay? I speed walk to the gate, I get there, and then the person at the gate tells me that's not the right flight. So then I had to track down another ticketing agent to tell me the correct gate. Finally, I reached to the correct gate where they are gonna board. And at this point, I'm thinking the bare minimum is that no matter what happens, I cannot vomit on this cramped airplane. I'm prepared for all the bad luck that's gonna happen. I am prepared to grab a vomit bag and just throw up in it. I'm prepared to find out my seatmate is a serial stabber. It doesn't matter as long as I go home. But then I get an email. And in that email, I find out that the flight to Norfolk has been canceled once again due to the snowstorm. <laughs> to rebook my flight. The only way to get on a flight that will land in Norfolk by tonight is if I wait several hours in Maryland and then take a flight for five hours to Florida and then take another five hour flight 
back to Norfolk up here, which is basically to say that I am actually flying farther away from Norfolk just so that I can get back to Norfolk. But the worker said that there is still a possibility that even if I went to Florida, the flight to Norfolk could still get canceled later today, which means that I would be even farther away from Norfolk and I would be stuck in Florida. You know, the state where people drive the Taco Bell with a grenade in their truck or run around licking doorbells. I decided to stay in Maryland because it was closer to Norfolk and decide to just stay here for the night and take on a flight the next morning which means that once again i have to pay for another hotel if you're wondering why i have to pay for my hotels it's because the airline isn't responsible for reimbursing you if the reason why your flight got canceled is because of the weather because that's out of their control which i totally understand but when you're paying over a hundred dollars every night for a hotel that shit hurts. I'm also supposed to be at work right now getting money instead of losing money, but I can't. So I had to email my boss this. Hi Elo, my flight got rebooked during one of my stops today due to the snowstorm, so I won't be able to arrive back in Norfolk until tomorrow on Thursday. I'll be out of office this Thursday and maybe Friday depending on what other shenanigans I get into. I have a hunch it'll be difficult to get my laptop and luggage back when I arrive. Plus, I'm dealing with a stomach flu. Yay! Today has been super fun. Anyway, if it turns out I'm unable to come in on Friday, I'll send another email ASAP. This is the most passive aggressive email I have ever sent to my boss. Some part of me wanted him to feel sorry for me, more so than he usually does. The only meal that I had that day was a cold burrito that I bought from an airport Chipotle. It was 50% rice and leaking in my paper bag that I tried to carry around as I searched for a bus that would take me to the cheapest motel. Here's a picture of me at my sad little motel. I just tried to find the cheapest one possible, but it was still over $100. Once again, I had nothing but the clothes on my back, my phone, and my charger, as well as rain boots that had holes in them. So, Obviously, certain necessities must be acquired. Here's a picture that I took that night that says, when it's 2 a.m. and you're out there in Maryland looking for toothpaste, it's survival of the fittest, bitch. I'm out there trudging through the snow, trying to survive as dirty snow accumulates in the holes of my boots just so that I can find some goddamn toothpaste. And thus concludes day two. Also, I think it's been 15 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this face mask off. Wow, I got... I don't even feel it at all. Wait, this actually feels really nice. I don't know if it's like the placebo effect or whatever, but for once, I feel like I have my shit together. Wow, okay, now I understand why people like to do face masks. I feel like my skin is not crusty anymore, even though the story I'm telling is very crusty. Yeah, this actually feels good. I kind of wish that it was an all day kind of thing because I wouldn't have minded keeping it on longer. Dude, this feels really nice. <laughs> okay, I'm getting distracted. On to day three. It is a new day, a new morning, and guess what? My flight got canceled again. This is the first time I have a legitimate excuse to be wearing the same underwear for three days straight. I had to schedule for a 2 p.m. flight, but knowing the pattern that's been happening, I asked the flight worker, hey, is it okay if I sign up for the waitlist for the 5 p.m. flight just in case my 2 p.m. flight gets canceled too? The flight agent pauses and then she says, we'd rather not. She doesn't say we can't. She doesn't say they're not allowed to. She just says, We'd rather not. You would rather not. Okay. Guess I'll just fuck off then. Screw me, right? Throughout the day, I ended up being on the waiting list for two flights. It is the 2 p.m. flight and the 5 p.m. flight because the 2 p.m. flight got canceled just like I predicted. But turns out the 5 p.m. one got canceled too. At this point, I've decided that I'm gonna sleep in the airport tonight. I just refuse to pay for three hotels three days in a row. I'm getting a little delirious as I'm waiting for a flight that will never come. So here's a few Snapchats that I took. These are gloves that have a dog that looks like it's either smiling or crying. Same. This is a McDonald's menu where one of the items says a wreck. Same. This is a book I read where one of the lines says, no, 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 please, no. Same. Three days in airport hell and I want to fucking die. There is no hope, no salvation, not even the sweet hope of mercy. Even if I make it back, is it even worth clinging onto a life I barely even want? When will death set me free? 
Same. I was also messaging my friends to give them updates throughout the day to show that I'm still alive, but also just use them as a soapbox to write down every single thought that I was having throughout the day. You know what would be funny? If I finally successfully get on a plane back to Norfolk and that plane crashes, lol. To which my friend replied, lol, yeah, that'd be quite the cherry on top of your shit Sunday. And then my other friend replied, no, the cherry on top of the shit Sunday is if you lived the crash. And I said, of course I would live the crash and I'd have to pay for all the medical bills for the rest of my life as people tell me how lucky I am to be alive. Or I'd be paralyzed and have to live as a vegetable forever, unable to tell anybody to please pull the fucking plug, please. At some point later in the day, I also messaged them. I think I overheard a kid asking another kid about what they do with time travel. And I automatically thought, I go back in time and make my mom get an abortion. Really the only good thing that happened from me being stuck in the airport all day was that I got to read a 500 page book that I actually really enjoy. I gotta give a little shout out to Defy the Stars by Claudia Gray because this book was the escapism that I needed during a dark point in my life. To this day, I still don't know if the book is actually good or if I was just delirious, but it doesn't matter because I needed this shit, okay? This is a sci-fi romance story about an AI who ends up developing a human conscience and ends up falling in love with the main character who is a dark-skinned Latina soldier. So I was like all about this shit. I highlighted one of the passages because it made me feel things, okay? As he hugs her closer, he feels a kind of pain indistinguishable from joy. Is this what humans feel when they embrace the one they love? But it can't be. Humans may mistreat those they love. Sometimes they abandon them entirely. They couldn't do that if they felt the way Abel feels in this moment. They couldn't even imagine it. Bruh, this robot learning how to love has got me fucked up. I'm reading this line in my stinky three-day-old underwear and I'm thinking, bitch, I want a robot that loves me unconditionally. The only man I will ever be with is a fictional robot. And you know why? Because let me tell you something that happened during day three. At some point during the day, I was being delirious as you can obviously tell from the pictures that I share, I ended up accidentally walking into the men's restroom instead of the women's restroom that was next door. There was a janitor there and he caught me and he looked at me very strangely and then I realized my mistake and I said, oh, I'm sorry, my bad, I was looking for the women's restroom. He just laughed it off and he was like, let me show you where it is. And I was like, uh, it's not really necessary because it's pretty clear it's next door, but I just assumed that he was being nice. So I was like, okay, he guided me to the bathroom, but I couldn't even go inside the women's bathroom because he was still trying to make conversation with me. He was like, where are you going? And I said, oh, I'm going to Norfolk. I've been stuck in this airport for like three days though because of the snowstorm, so that sucks. He said, where are you from? And I said, I'm from California. He said, no, no, where are you originally from? I'm like, uh, my mom's uterus? I don't know what the fuck you want me to tell you. I mean, I do know, but to be technical about it, I told him that I'm American, but again, he clarified, no, where were you originally? Like, what is your origin of blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, okay, I'm Vietnamese. You happy now? He also asked me, what do I do? And I said, I was a designer. And he said, oh, what kind of designer? And I said, I'm a graphic designer, obviously not fashion because of this shit going on here. At that time I was wearing like a pink sweater and pajama bottoms. It really wasn't anything special, but he looked me up and down and he replied, no, you look good. Oh, hey. Here's the thing, it's one thing to be reassuring to a stranger and say, no, nah, you look good, but it's another thing to be like, no, you look good. Uh, bitch, now is not the fucking time. I mean, never is ever the time, but especially now. I'm like, bitch, I haven't even changed my underwear in three days. If you're trying to get into my pants, you're gonna die. All I wanted was to use the restroom. <laughs> I love how the one night I decided to sleep in the airport, the janitor there hits on me. Makes me feel real good about sleeping on the ground at the airport by myself. I love it. For the rest of the evening, I see him going around the airport, cleaning up the rooms, and I happen to catch eye contact with him because he's looking my way. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm sleeping with one eye open tonight. 
At some point, I also try to sit somewhere else, but then he also makes his way around there to clean up the area that I'm sitting in. I'm like, bitch, please, I did not ask to be Asian. I do not want to reenact memoirs of a geisha with you. This is not the joy luck club, okay? This is the I'm fucked club. So now, I gotta strategize where I'm gonna sleep at this airport before this motherfucker finds me and turns me into the lovely bones. The only spot that I end up finding that's hidden from the public eye is actually around this corner that's right behind a trash can. Now, you you might think this sounds gross to you, but I'm thinking maybe this could be like a camouflage situation where I just blend in with the trash. I also had to buy a package of pads because as we all know, I was on my period and I realized that I could repurpose it to be a pillow. I'm like, dude, this is a fucking victory. I'm gonna MacGyver this bitch. We really living it up out here. Yeah, it didn't really turn out so well. Uh, the pads were rock hard. I actually think that if I slept on a rock, that would have been more comfortable than whatever I tried to sleep on. And I soon found out that the area that I was sleeping in was also conveniently right next to a TV that was playing the same commercial over and 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 over again for the rest of the night 24 7 on loop on repeat till the dawn of time till the end of mankind this shit is the kind of shit that black mirror uses to torture people but my worst complaint about all of this was that the airport was freezing cold. For some reason, they blasted on the AC for the whole night. So I was no longer sweating from being hot. I was just shivering the whole time. My hands felt like ice. It felt like my ears were gonna fall off because they were basically frozen. And I think it's one thing if I had to deal with it because I'm just like a whiny little bitch. So, you know, it's whatever. But what really pissed me off was that there was this elderly woman who was also staying at the airport overnight. She was trying to fly to Norfolk because her brother actually had cancer. So the fact that she's sleeping at this airport overnight with me is also an indicator that clearly she was not able to afford a hotel. That pisses me off because I feel like if you're not going to reimburse us for our hotels, the least you can do is just make sure that the airport is warm. It was just me and her that night and you know what? It really felt like we were the side characters of a post-apocalyptic TV show. Like she's the token elderly lady and I'm the token Asian and we're just floating around in limbo whereas the white main characters are living up their lives that's how it felt like and the frustrating thing about the flights being canceled constantly was the fact that Norfolk barely had any snow the weather app actually showed that there was a lot of sunlight going on but because the city is not used to dealing with snow every time there's like two to three inches of it the city just shuts down everything because they aren't able to properly handle their shit even though there's technically not that much snow we are stuck in the airport for three days. I don't know how I made it through the night, but I did. And it became the next morning, and then it was time to finally board my flight. I didn't want to get my hopes up, but by the time they were calling people to line up for the flight, I realized this was fucking it. I'm shivering, I'm cold as tits, my ears are about to fall off, but I'm gonna fucking go home. I get in line, and then a thought occurs to me. Is that elderly lady gonna be able to come home. Because everyone going on the plane is basically on a wait list. That's what happens whenever your flight gets canceled constantly and you can only go on the next available flight. You are put on a wait list that is dependent on when you just happen to be talking to the ticketing agent. I knew that the elderly lady was several numbers down from me because I was frantically looking around the line trying to find her and she was all the way in the back of the line. So at this point, I'm like, oh my fucking God, if this bitch does not get on the plane, that means I'm gonna have to give up my seat for her. I don't know if you are allowed to do that, but I mean, I have to do that, come on. Being a good person fucking sucks. I wish I was a sociopath because those bitches don't even have to care about anybody or anything. They don't have to worry about shit. So the line is moving forward and I'm like, constantly looking back thinking like oh my god i hope she gets on the plane because i do not want to fucking give up my seat for her we finally get on the plane and i'm just keeping like an eye out for the aisle just to make sure that she can get into the aisle and then fortunately she is able to get in and she's able to find a seat and i am so fucking relieved because i did not want to give up my seat for her at all that would have sucked so bad but at least it's over 
for now. I fly to Norfolk, I land, I go to the baggage claim to pick up my suitcase. I wanna share these messages I sent to my friends because I actually totally forgot that this happened until I looked through all of these old messages from that time. There was this not ugly guy waiting and when I was being cynical about how likely the flight would be canceled, he said he was a Navy pilot and explained why it can still work out because of plane shit and blah, blah, blah. That made me feel better. Now I keep looking at him while we wait for our luggage, wishing that mofo would chat me up slash be interested in me, but I bet this asshole isn't into fugly girls. I just like how I was so mad at this guy for not liking me because I was ugly. How dare you not give me a second glance just because I look like a fucking Smurf Skrillex who hasn't washed her clothes in three days. You know what? I'm not going to strike up conversation with him because he doesn't seem interested and also I'm fucking ugly. Anyway, he has good stature, doesn't have a hunchback like me, and seems responsible. However, because he is white, he could also be a Trump supporter. It's always risky. Just spot a wedding ring abort mission. This just encapsulates my love life in a nutshell. Anyway, people are getting their suitcase, but guess what? Mine never arrives. Big fucking surprise, am I right? You know, you get so used to bad shit happening to you constantly over and over that nothing really phases you anymore. I saw this shit coming from a mile away. A worker tells me that they are expecting a truck to come in later this afternoon with 300 more suitcases because not all of them were able to be packed on an airplane. I ended up deciding to sleep at the airport again, but this time in Norfolk, just to change things up, you know? And the reason why I did that is because otherwise I would have had to pay money to get an Uber from the airport to my apartment and then wait until 4 p.m. when the truck would arrive and then pay for another Uber from my apartment to the airport and then pay for another Uber to go home from the airport to my apartment. So you see what I mean? I have spent way too much money at this point over the past three days to waste it even more. I just decided I would sleep on a bench somewhere in the Norfolk airport and wait until 4 p.m until the truck arrived. I tried to knock out and forget that I ever existed for a few hours. And then it was 4 p.m. I went down to the lobby and then the entire hallway was just packed with so many suitcases everywhere. There were like hundreds of unclaimed suitcases that stretch across the hallway with no organization whatsoever. My suitcase is red. So I had to look through every single red suitcase that was down the entire hallway just to find mine. And guess what, bitch? Not a single one was mine. I'm gonna play a video clip for you that I recorded because it is just so ridiculous how many suitcases there were. Yeah, so I waited all this time for nothing. And again, at this point, I'm not even fucking surprised anymore. I turned around and see a sign by the Delta airline that says, you're back in 20 minutes, guaranteed. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. The worker told me I can try again tomorrow morning because they're still expecting another truck to come in with the other suitcases, but at this point, I just decided to cut my losses and go the fuck home. I called for an Uber. The lady that picked me up, she was like a very perky driver. She was trying to make small talk, but I was not having it. She was like, oh, where are you coming from? And I was like, I'm from California. I was stuck in the airport for three days. And she's like, oh no, I'm so sorry that happened. And I'm like, yeah. She did try to make small talk with me for the rest of the ride, but that slowly dissipated because I ended up quietly crying in the backseat of the Uber. And then it was just silence for the rest of the ride. <laughs> Listen, a bitch was really going through it, okay? I slept right when I got home. And that night when I slept, I had a dream that I got a text message from the airline informing me that they found my suitcase. And you know what? The moment I read that text, I immediately knew it was a dream and I woke up. Some things are just too far out of reality that I can just tell when a dream is nothing but a dream. That morning, my coworker drove me to the airport because he felt really bad for me. At this point, I finally have taped up my rain boots so that the snow wouldn't get inside the holes. I think this picture just perfectly encapsulates everything about my life. So, you know, I trudged through there with duct tape all over my boots, hoping to find my suitcase because this is my last fucking chance and it was not there but I went over to customer service to ask 
if they have found any other possible suitcases. And my red suitcase happened to be in that office. Thank fucking God. Literally, that was the only thing that went right throughout this entire trip. Yeah, I, I, I made it. <laughs> I made it back in one piece. One piece. More like different pieces that were broken throughout the week. And I fucking dare you to try to come at me with an even worse airport story. You might be able to say that if someone got stabbed at the airport, maybe that's worse. But I would disagree because at least they would die. And that concludes my story. I hope you found it entertaining. And I hope that makes you feel better next time you go on an airplane ride. I don't know how else to end this other than just thinking flawless by Friday for sponsoring this video. If they hadn't sponsored this video, I probably would never have come around to sharing the story because it's a lot to try to remember everything, but I will go ahead and share my trauma for the money. Don't forget to check out their site. It's linked in my description. Use my code for 15% off. Once again, it is now 15% off because we know that you're poor as fuck. If I was able to put on the mask, despite me being very hygienically incompetent, I think that's a good sign that you can take care of yourself too. Thanks for watching if you made it to the very end. Don't forget to unsubscribe from my channel. That's all I have. <laughs> Goodbye. I dreamed a dream of time gone by.